Now this tool is aimed at helping you calculate Jim Roy, probably the most important calculation in the entire toolkit. As you know, Jim Roy stands for Gross Margin Return on Inventory Investment, <coughs> which means effectively gross margin, the difference between buying in and selling out price, excluding tax, as reward for the money put at risk in holding stock. That's essentially it. In practice, you take the annual gross profit of a product, it can be a business, but essentially a product, in pounds, as a percentage of the average stock holding at cost price, then multiply by 100. So what we've got is average stock holding, as you know, equals the annual sales divided by the year-end stocks. And in retail, this is, in fact, a particularly, if you like, accurate measure of average stock holding, more than in any other business, in fact, because of the speed of rotation. It can be a good way of identifying good and bad products or performers in an assortment and taking appropriate remedial action. And it can be calculated for the entire company, i.e. their retailer, any branch within that retail organisation, departments within the store, categories within departments and even SKUs within a brand particularly important because that all sales revenue and profits are generated by the retailer stock holding, one of their three key assets, the others obviously being shoppers and space. But excess stocks are particularly damaging in that they can absorb cash and can force retailers into insolvency. And you know you pick up the can in terms of requiring incremental sales to cover any loss. The retailer needs to maximise return on inventory by reducing excess stocks, which, as you know, can build up through a combination of having slow-moving lines, um, building up stocks in anticipation of promotions, and to, in order to take advantage of quantity discounts. Either way, they are excess to requirement, and as such, have to be, become a carrying cost on the business. Now, suppliers then bear the cost of increasing stock rotation to correct these problems through more frequent and smaller deliveries. For these reasons, it's crucial that suppliers get involved in the entire process and establish a dialogue on Jim Roy with the retailers. In fact, Jim Roy can also be used to counteract a buyer's claim that a, a product has insufficient margin because in, in claiming that the margin is too low they're ignoring the fact of rotation and as you know cash is generated by a combination of whatever margin you get and the associated rate of sale so that's really the deep down value of Jim Roy. In terms of where it's heading particularly in flatline markets retailers are now reassessing all investments in the business especially stock holding and suppliers are under pressure to make smaller more frequent deliveries without sacrificing availability so real catch 22 for suppliers particularly otherwise retail gross margins will need to be increased because one way or another they need the money and you either do it by rotation or by margin and increasingly, Jim Roy will be used by both parties to identify and remedy un underperforming SKUs. And your interest, obviously, to make, if, keep your brand safe by being totally involved in the Jim Roy analysis process. In terms of its direct effect on you, first of all, Jim Roy highlights delivery, availability and gross margin issues. And, in fact, a given brand's Jim Roy needs to outperform the retailer's average Jim Roy. And there will be, as a result, a demand for increased gross margin or more frequent delivery or both. Otherwise, basically, they will delist you to avoid dilution of the overall performance. And the key skill for anybody on the supply side is the ability to be able to override computer logic. In other words, you've got to understand the cause and effect relationship in Jim Roy. In terms of what you need to know about it, first of all, basically calculate each brand Jim Roy and compare with the retailer's performance. The ultimate benchmark is in fact the retailer's total company Jim Roy and you get that by taking 100 multiplying it by the 
average gross margin for retailers, which as you know is 25%. They in fact buy all products at 75 on average and sell out at 100, excluding tax. Divided by the average stocks, and you get the average stocks through, as I say, looking at balance sheet and dividing the stock level goods for resale into the sales, excluding tax on the P&L. You need to then, to your knowledge of the category, estimate the gross margin return on inventory investment by retailer in order to relate your brand performance to its, if you like, other products in the category. <laughs> then you need to check out delivery availability and margin issues you may have because they're for sure going to be highlighted by any analysis of Jim Roy. And then open an active Jim Roy dialogue with the buyer in order to encourage a sharing of insights to set and manage joint expectations. It's key that you go in there with eyes wide open on each side. And then agree a strategy for fair share improvement. Now in terms of actually calculating Jim Roy, we'll now take a look at a tool in the uh, NAMCALC toolkit. Now as always, useful to use some real data. So we'll assume basically this retailer is selling £525,000 of your brand a year at a margin of, let us say, 28%. So in effect, basically the retailer is making 147000 on sales of 525000 at a cost of stock to them of 378000 now, when retailers criticise your margin of 28% as being too small, they would have you believe that having to buy in all of that stock, the 378,000 all in one piece, sell it over a year and wait till the end of that year to access the full margin. In practice, as you know, you deliver even daily in some cases. So from that point of view, it's essential to tie in the frequency and rate of sale with the margin to, if you like, represent the full value to that retailer of your brand. So now we're faced with the issue of how often your particular brand turns over in that particular retailer in a year. And unless you have access to the actual data, then you need to use a rule of thumb that's quite common in the industry. It goes as follows in that if you deliver every month to a retailer, they'll hold two weeks stock just in case you don't arrive. Equally, if you deliver every two weeks, they'll hold a week's in hand just in case you don't arrive. And finally, if you deliver every week, they'll hold half a week in hand. So from that point of view, let us suppose you're delivering every seven days to this particular retailer. So that on the morning of a delivery, you bring in seven days worth of stock, plus their three and a half already there. You're talking about 10.5 days as I say, stock holding. And that's the worst case. It obviously goes down to half of that figure in midweek and even lower by the end of the week. So we'll make our argument on the worst case scenario as is to set the 10 and a half day stock. Now 365 divided by 10 and a half tells me that this retailer is turning over your brand 34.7, nearly 35 times a year. And is therefore, if you take that 35 into 378,000 pounds a year's purchases of stock, then in fact they're sitting on an average at any time of 10.8 thousand pounds worth of stock of your brand. So this means basically your brand is like, if you like, a bank in which you're depositing permanently 10.873 pounds permanently over a year. And if they manage to stay in stock, not overstock, not go out of stock, then they will get 147, in effect, 147,000 pounds of interest on that deposit, which in fact is a return of 1,351 pounds on every 100 pounds worth of stock or, if you like, a Jim Roy of 1,351%, which is pretty good, particularly when you work out that even the best retailers in the UK are generating, based on, as I say, a stock turn of around 22 times a year and a gross margin of 25%, are probably making 550% across the whole business. You've just demonstrated here that you're doing almost three times that figure. That's why Jim Roy is so important. It's tying together, 
in a very logical way the rate of sale with the margin on your brand to, if you like, represent the full value of that particular brand in that retailer's business. Now in terms of the key takeaways, Jim Roy is very important. It will in fact determine your future. It's a calculation that's long overdue in terms of application in retail and it actually links and quantifies gross margin and rotation, the ultimate business drivers for both suppliers and retailers. However, the problem from a supplier's point of view is that basically it makes a strong case for a good brand and obviously a buyer will be resistant when they're particularly focused on wanting you to increase the existing gross margin. So you will need to understand this particular technique more than any other of the tools simply because you've got to not only understand it and believe in the output, you've got to be so convincing in terms of being able to persuade a retailer, a buyer, that basically it's a robust calculation and that basically has a relevance within their business. And the key and only way to do that, I guess, is practice, practice and more practice. So, if you would like to get an individual copy of NAMCALC, best thing is to go on to, as I say, www.camcityshop.com and you'll get all of the details. And incidentally, if you have any queries or particularly feedback in relation to new or different calculations, by all means contact us on mailbox at namnews.com. We really truly do like the challenge of dealing with new types of calculation. Thank you very much indeed.